Today back then, what happened today in modern history? Let's get most smartest. In 1743, George Frederick Handel's Oratorio Messiah premieres at the Royal Opera House in London, England. It is one of the most recognizable pieces of music to this day. In 1752, Pope Stephen II is elected to succeed Pope Zacharias, but then he dies two days later. Maybe they should elect younger popes. Just a thought. In 1775, Patrick Henry delivered his well-known speech featuring the phrase, Give me liberty or give me death, at St. John's Church in Richmond, Virginia. In 1794, Josiah Pearson patents a rivet machine. In 1801, Tsar Paul I of Russia is struck with a sword, then strangled, and finally trampled to death in his bedroom at St. Michael's Castle. Geez, can't a guy get some sleep around here? In 1806, Lewis and Clark had made it to the Pacific Ocean, so today begin their return trip to St. Louis, Missouri. In 1808, Napoleon's brother Joseph ascends the throne of Spain. In 1839, today in the Boston Morning Post is the first recorded use of OK, which is short for the intentional misspelling all correct, O-L-L-C-O-R-R-E-C-T. In 1840, the first successful photo of the moon is taken. In 1848, the ship John Wycliffe arrives at Port Chalmers carrying the first Scottish settlers for New Zealand. In 1857, American inventor Elisha Otis installed the first commercial elevator in a department store in New York City. You can still see his name on modern elevators. In 1858, E.A. Gardner of Philadelphia patents the streetcar. In 1861, London's first tramcars began operating. They were designed by Mr. Train of New York. Yep, a man named Train designed the tram. In 1867, the U.S. Congress passes the second Reconstruction Act over President Andrew Johnson's veto. In 1868, the University of California is founded in Oakland, California, when the Organic Act is signed into law. In 1880, John Stevens of Wisconsin patents the flour rolling mill. In 1881, a gas lamp sets fire to the Opera House in Nice, France, killing 70 people. In 1882, the Edmonds Anti-Polygamy Act is passed into law by the U.S. Congress to suppress polygamy. 1,300 men are later imprisoned under the act. In 1888, the European Football League meets for the first time. In 1889, the free Woolwich Ferry officially opens in East London. In 1901, Dame Nellie Melba reveals the secret of her now famous toast. Nellie Melba, Melba Toast, See where this is going? In 1903, the Wright brothers file their first patent for a flying machine. It is finally granted three years later. In 1908, American actress Joan Crawford was born. In 1909, Theodore Roosevelt leaves New York for a post-presidency safari in Africa. The trip is sponsored by the Smithsonian Institution and the National Geographic Society. You can still view photos from his trip. In 1917, tornadoes kill 211 people over four days in the Midwest United States. In 1919, in Milan, Italy, Benito Mussolini founds his fascist political movement. In 1921, Germany announces it will be unable to meet its World War I reparation payments, but then get into even more reparations debt with World War II. In 1922, the first airplane lands at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. In 1923, Frank Silver and Irving Kahn release Yes, We Have No Bananas. Yep, it was a real song. In 1929, during the Hoover administration, the first telephone is installed on the president's desk at the White House. In 1933, the Enabling Act gives Adolf Hitler dictatorial powers in Germany. In 1938, Judge Kennesaw Mountain Landis frees 74 St. Louis Cardinals minor league players from jail. In 1940, today is the first radio broadcast of Truth or Consequences on CBS. In 1942, 2,500 Jews from Lublin, Poland are massacred or deported. In 1944, an Italian resistance group bombs the German police station on Via Risala in Rome, killing 33 and wounding 110 
of the 156-man force. The occupying Germans retaliate by killing 335 civilians. In 1945, during the Battle of Okinawa today, U.S. Navy ships bomb the Japanese island in preparation for the Allied invasion. This is the largest battle of the Pacific arena. Also in 1945, the Swallow Sidecar Company changes its name to Jaguar. Yes, that Jaguar. In 1950, at the 22nd Academy Awards, all the King's men, Broderick Crawford and Olivia de Havilland win. In 1952, the New York Rangers blow a 6-2 lead, losing 7-6, while Bill Masienko sets an NHL record by scoring a hat trick in 21 seconds. In 1956, Pakistan becomes the world's first Islamic Republic. In 1957, at the 19th NCAA Men's Basketball Championship, North Carolina beats Kansas 54-53 in three overtimes, and Wilt Chamberlain of Kansas is named the tournament MOP despite not playing for the championship team. Also in 1957, the U.S. Army sells its last homing pigeons. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy visits San Francisco and then gets to go home. In 1964, in his own right, a book of short stories, poems, and drawings by John Lennon is published. In 1965, NASA launches Gemini 3, the first two-man space flight. Gus Grissom and John Young are the crew. In 1966, after 400 years, Today is the first official meeting of the Catholic and the Anglican churches. In 1968, Reprise Records releases Song to a Seagull, Joni Mitchell's debut studio album. Did you know that Reprise Records was founded by Frank Sinatra? In 1970, Conway Twitty's Hello Darling is released and becomes Billboard's Song of the Year. In 1972, the New York Yankees agree to continue playing ball in the Bronx. An excellent decision, if you ask me. Also in 1972, George Harrison's The Concert for Bangladesh concert film is released in the United States. In 1973, after a five and a half year run, the soap opera Love is a Many Splendored Thing runs its final episode. In 1976, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights goes into effect with 35 nations ratifying. In 1977, Elvis Presley begins his final concert tour. In 1979, Paul McCartney and Wings release Good Night Tonight. In 1980, Archbishop Oscar Romero calls on members of the El Salvador Armed Forces to stop killing their fellow Salvadorians. Also in 1980, 18-year-old American tennis star Tracy Austin wins her only WTA Tour Championship by upsetting Martina Navratilova and I'm sure Martina was upset. In 1981, the U.S. Supreme Court upholds the law making statutory rape a crime only for men. Also in 1981, the U.S. Supreme Court rules that states can require parental notification when teenage girls seek abortions. In 1983, in a nationwide television address, U.S. President Ronald Reagan announces the Strategic Defense Initiative popularly known as Star Wars, a proposed strategic defensive system protecting against potential nuclear attack. In 1984, the World Ice Dancing Championship is won by Britain's Jane Torval and Christopher Dean. Of course it was. In 1985, Julian Lennon stages his first concert. It is in San Antonio, Texas. In 1986, at the sixth Golden Razzie Awards, Rambo First Blood Part 2 wins. In 1987, a new daytime soap opera premieres today. It is called The Bold and the Beautiful. In 1988, Joni Mitchell releases her 13th studio album, Chalkmark in a Rainstorm. In 1989, Stanley Pons and Martin Fleshman announced their discovery of cold fusion at the University of Utah. In 1992, a new baseball team called the Florida Marlins begins selling tickets. In 1994, in what is known as the Green Ramp Disaster, a United States Air Force F-16 collided with the United States Air Force C-130 at Pope Air Force Base and then crashed, killing 24 soldiers on the ground. Also in 1994, 
Aeroflot Flight 593 crashes when the pilot's 15-year-old son accidentally disengages the autopilot, killing all 75 people on board. And in 1994 as well, at an election rally in Tijuana, Mexico, presidential candidate Luis Donaldo Colosio is assassinated. In 1995, How to Succeed in Business opens at the R. Rogers in New York City for 548 performances. In 1997, at the seventh Razzie Awards, Striptease wins. In 1998, at tonight's Oscars, James Cameron's epic drama, Titanic, wins 11 Academy Awards, tying the record set by Ben-Hur. In 1999, Ricky Martin's Live in La Vida Loca is released and goes on to sell over 8 million copies. In 2001, after 15 years in space, the Russian space station Mir crashes into the ocean. In 2002, at the 22nd Golden Raspberry Awards, Freddy Got Fingered wins. In 2003, in Iraq, 11 soldiers of the 507th Maintenance Company, as well as 18 U.S. Marines, lose their lives during the first major conflict of Operation Iraqi Freedom. 654 Iraqi combatants are also killed. Also in 2003, at the 75th Academy Awards, Chicago wins Best Picture, Adrian Brody wins Best Actor for the Piano, and Nicole Kidman wins Best Actress for the Hours. In 2004, Usher releases his fourth studio album called Confessions, which becomes the 2004 Billboard Album of the Year. In 2005, during a test, waste fumes ignite and explode, killing 15 workers at what is known as the Texas City Refinery explosion. Also in 2005, the United States 11th Circuit Court of Appeals refuses to order the reinsertion of Terry Shavo's feeding tube. In 2007, after some initial hesitation, Emma Watson signs on to appear as Hermione in the final three Harry Potter films. In 2011, actress Elizabeth Taylor passes away. In 2020, New York is confirmed as the new center of the COVID-19 pandemic in the United States. Also in 2020, the World Health Organization says the COVID-19 pandemic is accelerating. The first 100,000 cases took 67 days, the second 100,000 cases took 11 days, and the third 100,000 cases took four days. And lastly, in 2021, the Suez Canal was blocked after the mega freighter ever given ran aground. It took six days to move it out of the way. So that was today's episode. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel and give me a like. I know you liked it. Go ahead and like it. Talk to you soon.